Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Stick around, I got some great stuff on a sportsman to show you. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to be taking the Sportsman 850 and we're going to be putting in a fan bypass switch. We're going to put in the ability to turn the fan on and off without having to wait for the cooling temp sensor to tell the radiator fan to turn on. This bypass helps keep your engine cool in hot climates and in muddy climates. So without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is if you have the storage box on the front, remove that. Or if you have the rack, you're going to want to remove that. The storage box is pretty easy. There's a couple lock and ride clips inside. I'm sure everybody knows how to do this on their machine. We're going to pop this guy off and over. There we go. Next, you're going to want to remove your uh, cover here. It's two T25s. Remove those two T25s slide your cover off. Okay, now that we've got our cover off, we're gonna locate our fuse box, which is right here. We're gonna push the two metal clips, pull your cover off, and this relay right here, this is your fan control relay, all right? So next, we're gonna have to remove the uh, fuse box from its bracket and open it up. Okay, so here's our fuse box, and right down here, under this wire harness, there's a tab here, okay, a little tab. What you're gonna wanna do is push that tab up and then slide the box over. There we go. And it releases the box from the bracket. See, there's that little tab right there. So you wanna push this tab up and push it over. And see, it pushes it out of these little spots here. That's where the tab locks in right there. So once we got that off, now we got to open the box up. Now to open up the box, what I'm going to do is gonna pull it up. It's got these four tabs on all four corners. Okay. Right here, these four tabs. What you're going to want to do is using a screwdriver or a pick, push on those tabs. And while you're pushing, you're going to want to push the box down. So I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so like I said, just stick a screwdriver in, push on the tabs, and start pushing on the lower portion of the box. See, see that little tab? You stick the screwdriver under it, push it up, and just push on the box like that. Same thing here, push the tab up. Okay, that side of the box is released. And we're gonna do the same on this side, so. It's a little difficult, because the wiring kind of gets in the way here, but push push and there we go here's our lower cover off set that aside and now it actually will move easier because you don't have the headlight wires trapped inside that box so and this is what we got now so now we can access our wiring on the bottom for the fuse or I'm sorry for the relays so basically how this works is you've got power from the battery coming in you've got power going out to the fan then you also have uh, battery power coming in for the switch side and the ground is controlled by the ECM so basically what happens is the ECM sends a ground signal here it grounds out the switch portion of the relay which then allows it to click over and send battery power to the fan so all we're gonna do is install a switch and jumper it into the ground control of the relay so then we can turn the fan on and off with a switch instead of waiting for the computer. So we're gonna have to locate the wiring down here and basically just add a jumper into it. And I'll show you that in a second. <clears throat> Okay, so I just wanna show everybody how this works. So I got my power probe hooked up. Now your wiring for this is gonna be right here. So you're gonna have 
a red and a white. You're gonna have another red and a white here. You're gonna have an orange with a black and the yellow with the red. Or I'm sorry, the red with the yellow. It's a red with a yellow tracer. That red with the yellow tracer, that's your control wire. So if I touch it and I add ground to it, that turns our fan on. Okay, so this is the wire we're gonna wanna jump her into. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this casing open a little bit, get this red with the yellow tracer up so I can splice a wire into it. So let's get on to that. Okay, so we've got our casing pulled back and we've got our control wire out. Which now that I've got it out, I've got the color a little better. It's orange with a white tracer. That's this one right here. So all we're gonna do is very simple. We're gonna cut the wire in half. there should be good and then we're gonna strip both our ends back Oop, wrong size we're take some of our own stock wire it onto this end, like so, okay, and we're going to take a butt connector. Now, I would recommend using the shrink butt connectors because then you can seal them up, but if you don't, if you just have the regular ones, I'll show you how to seal it up. Well, pretty simple, just put her on in and crimp it down and crimp, okay? tug good now take your other end twist the wire up so you don't get any strays and just stick it in this side let's do this because I don't know where my good pair went but let's see doobie dooby doo there we go okay we're good and we're just gonna stick it in this side and crimp it down. Okay. And what I like to do is come up here to the flat portion and give it a little doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. just make sure we're good. And again, pull, we're good. Now, if these were the heat shrink ones, you would warm it up and they would melt down to the wire and seal it up. If you don't have those, take a little bit of RTV or weatherproof caulking or whatever. And we're just gonna fill the hole up here. We're put a little dab there. We're put some here. Whoa. Okay, and we're gonna push it all in. Get it all in there and that will seal up that wire. There we go, just like that. It's all sealed. Okay, and we're gonna take Electrical tape, and wrap it up. Wrap it up, nice and nice, just like so. Look at that. Push it all down, nice, nice. RTV will seal it. Okay, and now we can put it back up in here. Same thing. Take some tape, because this was wrapped right here. Wrap it back into place so it doesn't move around. Just like so. Okay. And push our casing back over it. Our wire out like so. Okay. And then wrap this back up. Okay. Bam. Okay. Now we can get our box cover. 
and we can put this guy back on. Now, this lock tab goes towards the wire harness. And make sure we get our wires tucked back in here nice and just push. There we go. And now we can take this guy and push it back down in here and slide it back into its appropriate bracket. We just gotta find the little, there we go. Push it in the holes and push down and slide it over. And it's locked back in. Okay, there's our control wire. Now we can take and put our cover back on. Like so. All right, so now let's get this hooked up to a switch. Okay, so here we are. Now the customer already tried doing this himself. Uh, so he's already put the switch in. It's not really what I would have done. Um, I would have put a switch up here on the cowl to make it easier and more accessible than here. Because I feel like here, it might get knocked, but I mean, that's the switch he put in. So we're just gonna use his switch. So wherever you wanna put your switch, I recommend up here, but just a toggle switch. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna run uh, one side of the switch for that wire. So our wire is gonna come off of there. It's gonna come up into the switch. And then the other side of the switch is going to go to a ground source. So he's already got the wires hooked up back here. And like I said, this is just a switch. You should be able to figure out how to put a one-way switch in. <laughs> but just on and off, okay? So let's find a nice ground spot to hook up the other end. And uh, let's test this out. Okay, so we got the switch in. The switch is hooked up to our control wire here. So now we have to hook the other end of the switch up to a ground source. Now there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, this bike's got lots of wiring under here um, and there's a lot of stuff going on the battery but you can put it just to the negative on the battery okay or you can ground it out to anything on the chassis and since our wire is up here this nut this is what holds your steering stem bushing in this would be a good ground spot so let's pop this off Uh, 13 mil and then we're gonna find an eyelet that fits over it yeah that one will work good okay so let's see right about there let's cut the wire strip it twist it back Add our eyelet. Oops, twist it some more. All right, add our eyelet. Same thing, you can use the uh, shrink wrap ends. If you got one of these, just a regular end, you just seal it up with some RTV, caulk, whatever you got. Seal that up. Seal ours up. This will protect the wiring from corroding. And push it all in. Pretty easy. Easy peasy, right? And tape it up pretty good. This will keep it all sealed up nice, nice. Very basic. Oh, it's already working. Turn the switch off. <laughs> All right, so let's put that guy on there like that. Let's put our nut back on. And tighten her down. Just like that. And now we hit our switch. Beautiful working perfect just the way it should so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take and clean up some of this wiring and get it loomed back in here so it's all nice and neat and then uh we should be pretty much done 
So let me get this cleaned up, get the machine back together, and we'll go from there. And there we have it, everybody. We have successfully added a toggle switch to control our fan separately from the computer controlling it, which is great on these hot summer days when you want that extra cooling and you want your fan running all the time. This is the trick. The other nice thing is that it still works. You can control the fan with the engine and the key off. So you're sitting, hanging out with your friends, turn it on and let it cool it off for a couple minutes. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, this works definitely for the 550 and the 850 Sportsman. Uh, it would also work on the Scrambler because the Scramblers have the same wiring. Um, and it's going to be very similar on other models. So you can take my video and figure out how your Relay works on your machine and get a separate fan control for yours. So again, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget, give me that thumbs up share, do what you can, and I'll catch you all right here next time on Polaris Nuts Garage.